you will not abandon us, but walk with us there and bring your truth and your promise so that even in the dark places there is the light of your hope. To your heart we come with our memories and our thoughts and our sorrows. To your word we turn, finding an anchor there for our soul, finding a strength beyond our strength in your promise. And Lord, we don't come as children looking for fables to give us some kind of easy comfort. Simply to find the truth. The truth about who we are. That we are your children. Loved with a love that never lets us go. So help us to find strength in who you are. And peace in who we are. And let the words of your gospel sung and read and considered, ring in our heart, even here, even in this hard place. For your love's sake we pray. Amen. Two Bible readings, the first from Matthew's Gospel. When the Son of Man comes as King, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his royal throne, and the people of all the nations will be gathered before him. Then he will divide them into two groups, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the righteous people on his right and the others on his left. Then the king will say to the people on his right, Come, you that are blessed by my father, come and possess the kingdom which has been prepared for you ever since the creation of the world. I was hungry, and you fed me. Thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you received me in your home. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. In prison, and you visited me. The righteous will then answer him, When, Lord, when, Lord, did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we ever see you a stranger and welcome you in our homes? Or naked and clothe you? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will reply, I tell you, whenever you did this for one of the least important of these, my brothers, you did it for me. And then in the letter of James, James chapter 2, My brothers, what good is it for someone to say that he has faith if his actions do not prove it. Can that faith save him? Suppose there are brothers or sisters who need clothes and haven't enough to eat. What good is there in your saying to them, God bless you, keep warm and eat well, if you don't give them the necessities of life? So it is with faith. If it is alone and includes no actions, then it is dead. But someone will say, one person has faith, Another has actions. My answer is, show me how anyone can have faith without actions. I will show you my faith by my actions. Thanks be to God for his word. Some people make connections with us through the sheer openness of their personality. And the sense of fun they bring to the way they live their life. And Jimmy was one of those people who could warm up <coughs> the cold place by the humanity and the genuineness of his way of dealing with people. He'd worked hard all his life, a plasterer to trade, and he always found work and he got along well with his workmates and all the banter and camaraderie of the workplace and special friendships that were important and true. And he did his work with skill and integrity and he was a valued and respected workmate. Jimmy was someone who got along with people. He dealt with folk in an easy manner, without side, without fear or favour. He took people as he found them, thought the best of them, until they ever gave him reason to think otherwise. And so neighbours and friends and workmates alike responded to his naturalness and his humanity and enjoyed his sense of humour. And if he got into a few scrapes, 
Well, that was just par for the course. A donkey abduction here. <laughs> the legendary Oak Inn trophy scam there. It was never dull. Never dull. It didn't matter if you were young or old, you got alongside. And you loved the experience of family. Glad when the time came that you could enjoy grandchildren and even latterly great grandchild. Times when the generation gap didn't seem to exist. It was just real people being real with each other regardless of age. And those who shared that time with them recall with affection and love. And they're glad that they've got a library of memories to hold on to and to keep. Not least as legendary New Year parties. In the formative years of his life, he had served his country, seeing active service with the Royal Scots in Hong Kong, Korea, Cyprus and Suez. And that was a, an influential time for him as it was for many in his generation. He learned disciplines and structures and figured out his priorities and he knew what friendship meant. It was here he learned to apply the old-fashioned values that shaped the person he was. And he came to understand that really, really life isn't about what you possess, but the person that you are, that's what counts. How you deal with other folk. And with that he was a, a contributor to the common good. Not just a talker, but a doer, taking his part, rolling up his sleeves, and bringing that natural humanity that comes without fuss or false piety. I will show you my faith by my actions. He was also a loyal soldier in the Tartan army and he followed the national team through thick and thin and it was mostly thin. <laughs> and his particular delight was the Scotland-England game. Homer away with his good pal Duff, he made his, his voice heard. In all of this he was blessed in a love and marriage that were integral to his happiness and the security and the sacredness of his home and family life. A marriage where each was his own person but where together they built something fine and wise and lovely and provided opportunities for their children to find their path secure in love and encouragement. So those who were privileged to know him were glad that they had the connection that you represent. As someone who had never made a great fuss about the things he believed in, but whose warm, genuine humanity touched against the lives of those who knew him. And it made their story better. It warmed their story. He was one of those people who was glad to be alive, and determined to live life to the full. He wasn't going to hide behind the sofa. He was also someone who saw the wisdom and beauty of the poems and songs of Robert Burns that he loved so well and knew so well. He, he understood that rank is but the guinea stamp. A man's a man for all that. Who were you really? He wasn't much concerned with the formalities of religion, but he did have that special sense of the worth of each individual, <coughs> and the obligations we have towards one another as human beings. And he knew that what you believed had to happen out there in the arena of human relationships and human need or it really wasn't worth having. So today we thank God for the good things we remember about Jimmy. We recognise that he had a special place in the hearts of so many people. We remember those family members with us in spirit, unable to be here because of distance or infirmity, and they are in our prayers too. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the people who bring colour into our story, with the vibrancy of their appetite for life. They don't do grey, they don't do bland, but they bring laughter and warmth and surprise and risk. And we thank you for Jimmy who represents all those things to the people who are glad to be his friends and happy to work alongside him and be his neighbour and share his story. For all those special, brightly coloured threads he wove into the tapestry of our life and our town and our community, 
we give you thanks. For everything about him that was brave, and everything about him that was strong, and everything about him that had integrity, we give you thanks. And for those who loved him and cared for him when times were hard for him, and sorrow came, and those who gathered round in true friendship, we give you thanks. Thank you for the long years of his life and for the story that we will talk about and not talk about for very long before a smile comes when we remember this moment or that, this thing said or that. So Lord, today we bring not words but feelings deep in our heart and thanksgivings that words won't just be quite right for, but they're real to us. Thank you too, Lord, that this bit of the story is just a bit of the story, and that you have more prepared for us than we dare think or imagine in the kingdom of your light and glory, where all the weak things are fixed, and all the incomplete things find fulfillment in the glory of your love. So give us peace as we let go our loved one into your care. Give us trust in your big heart, wide enough to include us all in a love that never lets us go. Be very close to those, Lord, who grieve most sorely today because they love Jimmy longest and best and knew him. Comfort them with your truth and our friendship, and as we share memories together and laugh about good times and smile about things remembered, strengthen us with the promise that one day you will bring us together with all those we've loved and lost a while. And there won't be any more tears, and we won't need any more goodbyes, but we will be yours, and all will be well. And hear us as we pray together, in the words our Saviour Christ gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so shall we stand together for the words of commitment. Could we all be <coughs> The Lord has taken to himself the soul of our brother in Christ, Jimmy Turnbull, now departed. We therefore commit his body to be cremated, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we place our trust and our confidence in God the Father who loves us and calls us by our name. And God the Son who loved us and gave his life a ransom for us. We seek the peace and the strength of God's Spirit as we make our journey from this day forward. Amen. We sing the hymn, The Old Rugged Cross. You'll find it pasted inside the front cover of the hymn book. A hill far away stood an old rugged cross, pasted on the inside the cover of the temple. <laughs>
and so a blessing. And so may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine soft on your fields. And the rain fall gentle on your face. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Amen. Please be seated.